The story of how I jumped my best triple jump ever. I got a story to tell. In 2010, I went to the USA Outdoor Championships. I competed there. I did really well. I jumped my lifetime best. I placed 13th overall. I flew out there by myself, which is kind of scary. During that time, I was trying to meet people, and I met a guy named Joel Pearson. Remember, that name is very important. He helped me out, kind of calmed me down. He watched my step when I was doing my run-throughs, and it was just really helpful. My goal was to make the World Indoor Championship, which was in Daegu. In order to do that, I had to first place top two at the Indoor Championships, but also I had to qualify for the Indoor Championships. I trained all summer, all fall and I was feeling good. The winter season, I ended up jumping at a couple of local meets. I went to Cal State Northridge where I jumped really well, but it wasn't enough. I had to jump at least 50 feet 8 inches just to meet the minimum standard. But I also had to qualify at an indoor facility. And in Southern California, we don't have any. So I decided to fly out to UW. The Husky invitation that was on Saturday, the Sunday meet was the open meet. The Sunday meet basically is athletes who did not make it in to Saturday's track meet they got bumped into the open meet, which was not as competitive. I knew that just hitting a mark is all I had to do. So I decided to pack light. And what pack light meant at that time was just have a backpack filled up with my jersey top, my spandex pants, and some track and field spikes. That was it. Which was the stupidest idea when you're flying to Washington during February. It snows out there. It's cold. So I get out there, go to the hotel, and the hotel is closed. What's up, y'all? on campus at University of Washington. Uh, starting to rain a little bit. Um, I'm gonna walk over to the track, get a little warm up, watch the track meet, and then from there check into the hotel. Uh, I'm excited for the weekend, and I'm just ready to get it done. So, uh, I'll be back. All right, I'm at the University of Washington. Uh, the track is wonderful. The Dempsey Indoor Stadium is where that W is. On the back side where those trees are is a lake, so you can actually take a boat from your house to campus. So, uh, nice place. So I go watch the meet. Jonathan Clark was jumping. UCLA triple jumper. Now he's like a superstar dunker. Check that out. A couple other guys jumped 51 feet, jumped really far. One guy went 52 feet. And I was sitting there watching these guys, and I'm like, man, I should have... I should have jumped today. So then the track meet was done. Ended up walking back to the hotel. And at that time, it's raining. I have no umbrella. I'm just walking in the rain. Get to the hotel. I check in, drop my bags off. And I think, you know what? I'm going to go grab some food. I'm back, you know, kind of hang out, relax, and wait for tomorrow. So I walk to Trader Joe's. It's about a mile away. Not realizing I'm walking a mile to the store in the rain. On the way back, I got lost. Ended up walking in like a mile and a half. So I ended up walking a total of like two and a half, maybe three miles the day before a track meet, which is not smart, but I did. So I get back to the hotel and I'm soaking wet because it rained the whole time. And this is what happened. I rented this hotel. The hotel said it was a European style. I didn't know what that meant. I'm thinking, all right, it's probably got like European sheets. It's probably got like, it's probably like a vintage hotel, things like that. But uh, I didn't really realize what it was until I got in. So I first came in, I noticed, all right, cool. Got a bed, got a little window that oversees the city, this and that. And then I'm like, okay, well, where's the TV at? So I'm thinking, all right, you know, maybe it's over here. I see a little desk countertop. I see another bed. And then there's a sink. No toilet. So no toilet, no TV. I'm chipping out. I can't find a heater. So I had to set up the two-in-one heater slash iron, you know, to keep the room warm. Then I realized... Where am I going to go to the bathroom at? The bathroom is down the hall with one stall. This whole floor, we share the same bathroom. I'm going to be nasty, but I'm not taking a shower. Yesterday I got here, I worked out, I was sweating and stuff, and I'm competing today and flying back. So I'm not taking a shower at all because that's nasty. Because I had no TV, I was just sitting there with nothing to do. And I start writing down my goals. And I'm like, all right, well, what do I want to do exactly? I said, I want to jump, um, I don't know. 52 feet, 5 inches. That sounds like a really, really good mark. I think it's possible. Write that down. And I wrote that like 10 times over and over and over again, right? And then I had been working on this thing called visualization where you just kind of 
go into a meditative state and you picture yourself doing whatever that you do. You just kind of make this movie in your mind. Well, whenever I did this movie in my mind, I could feel it, but I couldn't see anything. It was literally pitch black every single time. But it felt good because my, my body would feel excited whenever I did it. I just couldn't see anything. So I wrote down like my goals. I visualized a little bit. I wrote down what I was going to post on Facebook. Like literally, I wrote down verbatim, like I'm going to write this. And I wrote that down. Loaded that up, put that in my bag. And I scheduled my shuttle for 4.30. The track meet was scheduled to be done promptly at 3 o'clock. So I said, I'll be done by 3 o'clock. I'll be able to get an hour and a half to go eat, shower up a little bit, and then hit, hit the shuttle, get to my flight by 6 o'clock. Money. I had to do it. I was talking about not taking a shower, and I was like, I feel dirty. Like, I smell my underarm, and it smelled like Thursday, and today's Sunday. I went ahead and just did a little shower thing, you know, got a little wash rag, a little soap little towel to make sure I don't make nothing too dirty. I feel fresh, I washed all my past away. Now I'm ready to go get it tonight. I get to the track meet and I'm watching long jump go and it's taking a long time. I'm trying to figure out why it's taking so long. And I'm just doing the math on one flight takes about 45 minutes. So by the time we get the triple jump, I usually be jumping around seven o'clock. And I'm like, that's not gonna work because my flight's at six and my shuttle's at 4.30. So I'm starting to freak out a little bit. So as I'm freaking out, I'm thinking, I'm gonna go tell the clerk of the course that I have to leave early so I have to jump in the first flight so I can leave the thing that sucks about that is you get three jumps in the prelim if you're in the top nine you get three more jumps in the finals well I just lost those last three because I had to leave early so now I went from six jumps to qualify now I have three jumps and uh, I've only jumped 49 feet 9 inches this season and I had to jump at least 50 feet 8 inches I knew it was possible but I had that kind of stress over me and then, so now I see triple jump starting to warm up. So I'm feeling good. And I realize, like, I'm in the first flight. So I got to hurry up and warm up right now. And they're putting the boards down. And they're putting the board at 36 feet. My goal was to jump 36 feet in the first two phases. So I'm thinking, like, this can't happen. I need a board for myself. And I'm telling them, like, yo, you got to do something different. I can't jump from this board. And the Oregon State coach said, he said, you know what? I'll handle this. You go warm up so you can get here on time. I was like, cool. Uh, so he handles that, I go warm up, and then all of a sudden my calves started to cramp up because I had walked stupid mile, two miles the day before. But I calmed myself down, I knew that like it wasn't going to mess me up. Got to the runway, did my run throughs, I felt okay, but my calves were like still kind of twitching a little bit and it didn't feel good. So I put the compact unit on it and that made it feel good for about five minutes. It, it really did work, it was, it was really helpful. So now it's game time. What happened with the board was they put down the 40-foot board. I jumped from that, but the electronic measurement system was measuring from that 36-foot board. So they would just manually measure out the rest of the distance between the 36-foot board and my board, and that was it. So me and another guy were jumping on the girls' runway because we had to put that 40-foot board down. I do my first jump, right? I'm running down the runway, calves cramp up. I run through the runway, it's a foul. And I'm thinking, I got two more jumps to jump. What can I do because this is not working out too good? I said, well, what if I just get a fair jump and get a jump that gets me to the finals? I can re-warm up and then go. But I'm like, but I might miss my flight. Like, I'm just freaking out. I, I had no idea what to do. Then all of a sudden, this guy calls me. Kenan. And I'm thinking Kenan. like, who knows me out here? I'm going to up about myself. I have no idea who anyone is out here. And all of a sudden, Joel Pearson says, hey. I'm out here with my athletes, what are you up to? I'm like, oh my gosh, listen, this is what's going on. I'm freaking out. I told him the whole story, and he's like, hey, you know what? I'll give you a ride to the airport. Don't worry about it. I want you to get all six of your jumps. Like, cool. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to just go get a fair jump, and then get into the finals, have a seat for the next two hours, re-warm up, rehydrate, and go from there. So then I ended up running down the runway. I'm just kind of jogging, coasting it. I jump, land in the sand. I'm like, all right, that should be a good 46 foot jump, something like that. And it was 49.9. I jumped pretty far. And I was like, you know what? That felt good. I'm in the finals now. What if I just go for it? Like, what if I just go for it right now and see what happens? I put the compacts on again. My legs feel great. Now I'm on the runway. And I'm like, you know what? Let's get this started. Get everyone clapping, everyone's watching me. I start my approach, I'm running, I'm running, and I get to the board, I see nothing, nothing at all. Pitch black, I'm at home, and I'm laying in bed, and I'm visualizing myself go through the perfect jump. And I feel my body moving through these motions, 
but I can't see anything, but I'm comfortable, I'm calm. And then it just felt so beautiful. Like I literally was not on this earth. I was somewhere else. I hit the sand, I wake up in the pit and I'm looking around and I'm like, I hear everyone saying like, ooh, and I'm thinking something just happened. What just happened? Like what's going on? And I walk to the scores table and they're telling me that they can't tell me the score yet because they're measuring it from the, the board, but they have to remeasure it because I don't know. And they tell me this number and it was 1597 and I'm like, what, what does that mean? And it's just like, oh, it's 52 feet, four and one half inch. I wrote down that I wanted to jump 52 feet, five inches. I'm literally half an inch away from what I predicted. And it's just like, all of a sudden, everything hit me. I, I qualified. I just won this whole meet. Oh my gosh. So I'm like giving out high fives. I'm like jumping around. I'm running all around the, the track facility. And all of a sudden, all the emotion just hit me and started crying. You know, you ever watch the Bob Beeman video? Like where his legs literally just collapsed. So then Joe and his dad took me out to go eat. And I made my shuttle. I made my flight home. I posted the exact Post that I wanted to post on Facebook and it was just an exciting experience. It was hands down the most memorable experience ever. What's yours?